think we're ready to start. Hello, everybody. When it is November, I'm probably going to change this back into what it, what it was. But I may have to change the rug because I don't remember what the rug was. I mean, it was purple, but I want to change it. But uh, we're not here to prattle on today about things I know and things that will probably go back to normal. Because we are getting close to Halloween, kids. And as such, I should probably change this up a little bit. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. We're going to talk a little bit about a little bit about the EXEs. Am I right? And why EXEs are scared of me? Because it might as well explain. I might work. So, knowing that in my universe, it's like that EXE does run magic. Most of the creepypasta creatures do run rampant in my universe. Well, it's not that they run rampant, it's that they find portals to get into. So that EXE was one of those creatures. Basically using the little EXE for the thing, putting in your computer. And sucking it into and sucking you into this world so it can play with you. Which is just gruesome torture. So basically what happened to me was since I was the since okay, this was me we before I had got here. But even back then I was still pretty formidable. Even back then. So Y'all know the story of when I came to the EXE universe and like had to deal with all the EXEs. I pro I've explained that before. But what you don't know is that the second year, the EXEs, the one EXE, I would say the main one, that is now called XOR. You know, they just say it's on the EXE fans. You guys are the only ones that actually care, actually cared enough about the lore to give the give. The little entity of me. Like, you ain't seen, like, you are not seeing freaking JC Hyena putting in that much effort. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm slamming JC, you know, JC Hyena, but like, to me, like, my freaking thing is not in the creepy posture of my forms. Like, they're all furry haters. No, your thing wasn't that original. I mean, you were. Like, out of character for a moment, I just had to, I just had to say that, like, Sunday you need to be is just kind of like a mix of like two different slashers, but nothing really differentiated from like an actual violent Sonic, which is freaking Fleetway Sonic, because like, think about it, he's like a, he's like a genuine, he's like a ripoff of Fleetway Sonic. Just take away the devil powers. Just keep the urge to kill and people take away the devil powers. And he's exactly the same. So anyways. So it's like that you see he said, you beat me before. But now, let's play another game. He tried to get on Sunko Mar he tried to get on Sunko Maru, but it really wasn't on Sunko Maru. It was just the EC. It was just one of his Little, little servants that he tried to make it look like Anzac Mara. But I knew it was Anzac Mara because he didn't have his Omni guns with him. And when we're in, when he's in danger, he mostly grabs those Omni guns as his way of fighting back. He also tried to play off Harima. The Harima, like the, the clone of Harima that, that he made with one of the full servants. Actually called me Broman's prayer. Harry has never called me that. He's called me Bro. He, he called me Big Bro a few times, but he never really called me out. He never really sends it out in the open. Do you think that's kind of a form of weakness if he says around like other people that are around him? And he's in a very dangerous situation, so why would he say that? So I deduce they were my. They were my actual bros and 
proceeded to basically use my powers of of deceit, veil pulling, and they've just revealed themselves to be the EXE servants. And, and the cult of X was there too, trying to stop me. But then I just... Okay, guys, this is where it gets really gory, but I'm going to kind of skip over it. Let's just say... Uh, let's just say uh, dismembering was a thing. And and it was so often. And uh, eyeballs were pulled out. Yeah, but let's just keep it at that. So, the, the maniac city that you all know is a few of you like, You are not strong in this world. Oh, yeah. They just started shooting new spears, which really didn't pale me. I was bleeding for a bit. I was like, <laughs> You fool. Do you not know who I am? I am the grandson of the Blue Reaper. Do you understand that the moment I came in here, Blanche gave me temporarily, temporarily, temporarily immortality. So you, my friend, are not, you are no, you are no less a god here than any, any schmuck with a little bit of with any schmuck with a little bit of, a little bit of that old, a little bit of that old pretending to be God juice. And, you know, I dismembered your cult members like you actually care, but, yeah. And they want to go to your world of pain? I took them to a world of pain. <clears throat> he started to say some of his servants on me, who are people he basically turned into other Sonic characters. And they're just, they're gory, and one, people are missing eyes, limbs, and stuff, and they're trying to stop me. And I just, I played a certain, I played an old song of mine, and literally started slashing through all of them. But while I was fighting them, the apes would play dirty. Remember, this is before, this is before a... Before I got God's here, and way before I decided to put those mental blocks in my mind, I have a bunch of mental mental limiters on my head, simply so I don't want people to break in. But the EXE had me for a minute, actually for a complete full three hours, where he literally used my memories of of my my head's life against me. And I was tripping. I was tripping hard. Basically every other thing you left me over and over again. The body slowly became slower and slower still. All I could do all I remember was straight terror. Only time the UC has actually ever made me feel this way. It's like, look, you want me to be free of all this pain if you just let a little bit of behind the seat. And for a minute, I was dead. But then I was, and then, a voice in my head rocketed out of me. And he said, You really think I'm just going to let you control control my other half? Negative. Negative actually was the one in control while I was free. I was flipping out. It's like, who are you? I am I am Bugsy's negative side. If you don't know who I am, some people call me negative. Bugsy Negger. And the best one, Dark Bugs. I'm like Dark Empire without all the backstory. 
So, oh, hold on, everybody. It really gets good, but I'm being it. I, 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 you little P, little demonic entity, am something a little bit more powerful than you are. How so? Well, to be quite honest, see, Bugsy, you know, Bugsy is the other half of me, and I'm the other half of him. So, basically, by attacking him, you're attacking me. So now, I'm gonna have to do a little something a little different for you. My better half is trying to impale, destroy, burn you, but I think I'll do something even worse to you. I'm purging this little dimension of yours, of all of your evil influence, and turning it into the straight up version of Green Hill Zone. Not a distorted one with dead animals, everybody's alive. Including that sonic body you seem to love so much. How are you? From my hand and from my palm. Make this darkness, make this darkness forever gone. Through the halls, through the halls I, through the halls I still call. Bring, bring an end to this. Once and for all. The, the spell actually literally took Signed that he exceeds influence, but it did leave him with a sort of out of Sonic's body, which got completely healed. You know, negative has you know, even though me and negative have the same, even though me and negative have the same body now, he actually never told me what that spell was. He told me it was a spell that purged evil from anywhere, like it purges demonic forces from anywhere, anytime, in any place. So, this Green Hill, get this, was not even really actually part, was really the game. Literally, it was a Green Hill from another dimension that Sonic that AC took over. <clears throat> Sonic was trying to fight the AC hard, hard, but he gave up because, like, it really took over. Because, get this, the AC took a, a dark part of Sonic's mind and let that thing run amok. Then he absorbed the dark part of Sonic's mind and it took over everything. So yeah, he basically took dark he basically absorbed Dark Sonic within himself. Ergo the Ergo the true explanation of why he's so powerful. <coughs> but not powerful enough to stop me. Well, negative took him out, but I was like, using my dead wife, eh? Actually, at that point, I, I think I purged my memory of the other day, and really, it was me removing the memory that she's actually, like, her memory is not that she's still alive, but it's, it, it's whatever. It's whatever. I think I remember that. Like, I've had my mind wiped so many times, like, I'm probably, like, forgetting some shit. But, but, my dear friends, I literally put the EXA in the in a thing that tortures him infinitely. You're probably wondering, what can torture the EXA? They probably, they love pain and shit. Oh, I took him to the one place where EXA can't even make any damage. I took him to the world of Hello Kitty. Yeah. I'm not even getting about that. Like, any of the other EXEs who attack me nowadays are just underlings of the old one. But even they're afraid. But I took him there. He's like, and every, and every night, I can hear his screams of pure horror. You know, actually, that helps me sleep at night. Like, you guys don't know. Like, some of you guys, <clears throat> some of you guys listen to ocean waves. Some of you guys listen to dolphins. Some of you guys listen to rainforests. Rainforests while it's raining. No, 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 no. I listen to the screams of my freaking of my not really enemy, but the thing, but the demon I torture. 
And that helps me fall asleep all the time. I mean, right now I can kind of hear him. He's like, he's just screaming in this unintelligible language that only I know because <clears throat> it's somewhat, it's somewhat chaos lordian in nature, but uh, some of the other stuff is slow mojo stuff that I do know, but I'm not really going to say. <sighs> but yeah, most of the EATs that come after me now are more underlings than anything else. Also, I fought Candlejack once. Yeah, not even kidding about that. <clears throat> I actually summoned... I actually thought Candlejack was fake, and I kept saying Candlejack, 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 and then he came. But, but Candlejack was good in rope. Like, the thing about Candlejack, he gets you, but he doesn't know what to do with you after he's got you tied up. And I was like, dude, Candlejack, what are you going to do with me? After? What are you going to do with me now that you got me tied up? He's like, I uh, haven't really thought of this this far. Then, what? Why are you scary? Well, well because uh, Candlejack. Well, yes, I get that. You're Candlejack. You're spooky. You float. But what are like? What are you supposed to be? Are you are you the ghost of a dead man? Or are you a ghost of an irate irate teacher? That's why you always be getting the kids and adults. Like, what are you? Well, you know, I should just let you go since you're questioning everything about. Well, you're kind of a lame freaking specter, are, are you not? And he just kind of looked at me for a minute. I looked at him and was like, Dude, dude, how are you scary if you don't even know what you even do? Like, Slash is killed. Ghost hunt. Slender Man basically eats children. You know, Freddy goes into people's dreams. Jason and Mike and Mike Myers kill. Michael Myers kill. Like, what do you do? I mean, tie people with rope. I mean, I mean, if I was into that, like, like if people were, like, people are into getting tied up. So you know, you should be turning people on more often than that. It's like, don't even get me started. I looked at him and was like, ugh, so, yes. A lot of people like role play. <laughs> well, I mean, hey. <laughs> we, did, we are in a time where people like all these different fetishes, man. And that's, and, and also that's a little story of how me and Carol Jack actually go golfing on the weekends. Yeah, because it, it's actually not a bad, it's not, it's not a bad dude. It's not a bad dude. He actually, he actually, I actually used to hang out with him, but he's still trying to catch Freakazoids, so that's a thing. Um, what's some other stories that you can get you with real quick? Ah, yes. The top. The time that me and Ansakamara were chasing ghosts. Actually, it's one. It's actually a very pissed off version of Casper. Like, guys, this ghost. He was like, "It's like I'm Casper. I'm fucking tired of everybody treating me like I'm just a little, a little, like a little bitch. So now I'm not Casper the friendly ghost. I'm Casper the unfriendly ghost." And me and Ansakamara looked at him like. This is so tough. This feels like this is from something. Like, I just look at him and he looks at me and we're like, this is from something, isn't it? And Casper looks back at us and we're like, and he's like, no, this isn't from something. I'm just tired of you all thinking I'm a little bitch. Well, you kind of are. You don't really scare people. And like, every time you try, you scare somebody and then you feel bad about it, man. Like, Kabash always tries to teach you how to fucking scare people, and you're just like, No! You can still be friends with these, you can still be friends with people and still scare people, man. 
you know, always have to be like the friendly, the friendly little pushover. I mean, if I was dealing with stretch, if I was dealing with stretch, stinking fat, so I tell them where to stick it. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't. I would be bullied around by stupid, stinky, stinky, and big boy. Like, jeez. It's obvious that they do love you, so that's probably the reason why you stay, but... Honestly, man, while you're being all absurd to us, you should be absurd to, you should be absurd to them. Seriously, man. Besides, <clears throat> you don't think you're a bitch, you just need to be a little bit more assertive. <clears throat> yeah, man. I mean, like, look at me and Bugsy, I mean... Me and him, we were always like the, we were like the guys that no one really took seriously. But me and Bugsy got more assertive, and well, the rest is history. What we're saying is, what we're saying is, Casper, you need to just be a little more assertive, man. Guy is telling you what you need to scare some people. Say like, fuck no, I'm my own ghost. I get it all. I get it all by myself. Let's see. I don't think I said that. Mm. Okay, no, you didn't. I, I, I wrote this here, but you said someone wanted to just be yourself, dude. I hate when you do that. Once. I know. No, man. I, I really think it's creepy. And add Sakamaru. Look at my wife's. Could you stop doing that? Why, brother? Look at my eyes. Look at them. Look, they have no pupils. Just the whites of my eyes. How do you even do that? Magic. My magic? I hate you. <laughs> Come on, bro. Chill, chill, chill. Besides, got just some reason. You got some recent jokes. You didn't get a Kit Kat? Well, we're not really passing on candy this year, and I bought a lot, so we're just gonna kind of... We're gonna kind of eat it. We're gonna kind of eat it in the, in the virtual world. How are we gonna eat it in the virtual... Oh, magic. Yes, yes, yes. So... So this is what, we were, so this is what you've been doing, just telling stories. Oh, can I, can I tell one? Oh, yes. I shall tell you the story of the hagfish of Arizona. Years, years ago, people have noticed strange things in the water. The leg, the torso, and the discarded scale. Now, people were thinking that's just a big fish. But no fish. It wasn't even a shark, but no no fish, if, you, if you're not a shark, would ever attack a human the way that they're doing. So, one fisherman tried to catch this thing. But when he saw this fish, it looked so horrifying. So grotesque. The so grotesque. The rotund. They called it the hagfish. Because it kind of looked like a witch in the face. But, um, but he called it the hagfish because it just looked kind of gross. But the hagfish, he, when the, when the fisherman caught it, he, it bit the, it bit the man. In and ripped off its face. And he was like, and as he as he was screaming, the hagfish tripped him into the water and dug and brought him down to the dark depths below. And before you before you knew it, that fisherman was never seen again. Rumors spread about the hagfish. No one really thought he no one really thought it existed. Everybody just thought it was just a 
the work of a person's active imagination. But one person knew better. And his name was was Mike was Michael. Michael Steppenwolf. I took my head there. We go look you you don't find Michael Steppenwolf on Google and be like, shit, that's an actual name? I am so not. Yeah, yeah, you are. Anyways. So the hagfish would always go after the fisherman because he hated fish. He thought, the hagfish thought that if the fisherman, if there was no fisherman in the world, fish can just propagate and, be, and live, live as they should in the water. So whenever, so whenever it's Halloween, the hagfish would always go after another fisherman. Because the rumors of the hagfish killing fishermen only made the bravest fishermen want to go after it. But after they go after the hagfish, they were never seen again. And it became a legend until Michael Stephanos decided to test that theory. He was he he owned a tackle shop. Like uh, on the outskirts of Arizona. And he, he was dressed to the nines with fucking bait, those little fisher hats, the boots, and a whole bunch of lures on that, on his little, on his little vest. And he, and he sought to fight, to fight the hagfish and finally finish him up and finally finish him. The thing that I forgot to mention about the hagfish is that the hagfish can actually, the hagfish can actually speak. But when the hagfish talks, it sounds like this. Like he's gasping for air. So, Michael Stephanos, he literally tried to catch this fish. For hours. The hagfish knew that he was trying to catch him. But he was smart. He was real smart. He, the hagfish has taken about 20 lives so far. And Michael is going to be Michael is going to be 20, 20, 21 a list of long standing days. When he, dra- when he drags a person, when the hagfish drags someone down, he cuts off their heads and puts them in his little lot of his trophies. Kind of mirroring what we do to actual fish when we catch them. We don't want to eat them, we want to use them as trophies. So, he was like, So, another hunter seems like they want to catch me. Catch me again. Well, I'll give you something to catch, all right. The hagfish takes the bait, but he pulls on. He pulls on. He pulls on the. He pulls on the fishing rod hard as even harder than he's ever had before. Michael knew this, so he. So this rod is made of an extra, an extra strong piece of fishing line that he got from his grandfather. Because truly, his grandfather was number 10 on the list of victims. So he had something personal to do. He had something personal against the fish. So he started pulling. He started tugging, reeling the fish in. The hagfish fought back as hard as he could. He couldn't, he couldn't let Michael get away with this. He couldn't let himself be caught. He's killed so many people now. He can't just let himself be caught, he thought. He kept pulling, and you know Michael's on the little, you know, one of those little boats. I forgot to say that he was on one of those little boats, and uh, basically, like he's getting pulled out in the sea. Like he was on shore at first, like close to shore, but he is like, but the hagfish is like pulling him out to, out to sea, deeper and deeper and further and further, until he was not even close to land at this point. 
hagfish, the hagfish laughed. Now Michael actually got to hear the hagfish actually laugh. He was fucking creeped out, man. But he wanted to, but he wanted to finally get the hagfish, and he wasn't gonna let anything stop. Him. So what he did, so what he found, so what he had was this experimental gun that it, this experimental gun that turns water into bullets. Okay, I'm talking about how, how does this man have water bullets? Bugsy, it's a thing. No, it isn't. Or is it something that you created? Is this just a big fucking advertisement for the stuff, for the, for the tech you're making? Bugsy, come on. No, it isn't. Whatever you say, bro. So, anyways, Michael grabs the gun and tries to shoot after the hagfish. But the hagfish dodges the bullets. But then he tries, but then he pull. he try, he doesn't try to freaking take the rod. He tries to capsize the boat so Michael can be in the one place that he shouldn't be. The water. Michael Knowing that this is how the hagfish gets it, he, he actually had some knives and stuff in it. He actually had some knives and stuff in his coat, ready to take on the hagfish. The hagfish was like, bring it on. Now the hagfish, he's like a snakehead, but bigger, larger than any snakehead we have ever, that you've ever seen before. Large, large, like a snake almost. With a sort of, with a sort of razor fin, fin that he uses to cut off the, cut off his victim's heads. So they, they fight. Michael not giving up on the hagfish, and the hagfish not giving up on taking his, ne his next victim. They go at it for what seems like five hours. Michael was getting tired while being in the water. And the hagfish still could keep going. Michael almost like got the hagfish. But the hagfish grabs Michael down to the watery depths. The air, the pressure of the water crushing him under, under its weight. Before Michael can finally, finally die, he grabs the underwater explosives, which is underwater dynamite. Why is there under? I'm talking about why is there underwater dynamite? Because there is. Come on, what's it come on? I'm just saying, why is there underwater dynamite? How the how the fuck does that work? Dude, it does. No, 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 bro. Explain that shit. It just does. Let's just say Michael Stephanos maybe went to a tech guy who had various things because he was also studying the hagfish. Well, maybe you could have explained that in the actual story instead of just adding it. Well, that's what happened. I'm sorry, just didn't add it. Oh my god, this is fucking st this is fucking stupid. I mean, just go ahead. So anyways, well, before I got rudely interrupted, folks, by my, by my bro, he grabs the underwater dynamite, he puts it in the hagfish's mouth, and adds the bullet. How is it lit if he's underwater? Like, he's deep. He's, like, down to the murky depths of the water. So how did he light the fuse? Bugsy, it's just underwater water. I mean, it's underwater dynamite. It just does. How the fuck does it just do? That's not a good. That's not a good excuse, bro. Well, can I just finish the story? All right, whatever. I mean, I know you're a critic, but Jesus, let me just lose face start before you freaking do all the criticisms. 
All right, all right, all right. Proceed, bro. Proceed, bro. Proceed. So, go, so the bagfish finally gets what he, he knows that he also he not only has Michael, but he has the underwater diamond. Michael holds on to it with his, le with his right hand. You don't hear it because he's like dying underwater, but he's like, which means take this, you fucking hag fish. An underwater explosion can be heard from all sea creatures. Even a certain, even a certain, even a certain sponge with square pants. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So wait a minute. He was, so the hag, wait a minute, the hag bitch went to Bikini Bottom? No, it's just the power of the explosion was so, so big, it could be heard in Bikini Bottom. Which is way, way off from Arizona. How the, how the, how the fuck does that work? Jesus! But he proceeds the the only he proceeds to blow up the hagfish and he slowly dies under the murky depths of the water. But no but unbeknownst to him, even though he thought he finally he finally avenged his grandfather and all the people who let the hagfish kill, the hagfish slowly gets up. But now it's only a skeleton. People say that this hate is the reason he's still alive. It's the only thing that keeps him going. So still, the hagfish waits. Every every Halloween. In a, in 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 Arizona for his next week. And now he is now the true. The immortal hagfish. That's a tomorrow. Yeah. I love I love you. Well I love you, little brother. I want to tell you this now. And I, I don't want you to get mad at me, but that story was fucking stupid. That was the most stupidest thing I have ever heard come out of your mouth. Oh, like you can do better? Oh, yes, I can. Remember the man with the hook for the hand? You were fucking... You were wetting yourself last year. Hey, hey, don't, don't talk. Don't talk about that in front of our audience. <laughs> I scared you so bad. You went running home to talking. <laughs> I mean, I guess the, I guess the hagfish is a good idea on paper. Why can't it just been the dude had a knife and he was trying to fucking try to hack at the hagfish? Probably, like, maybe the hagfish has some sort of weakness and maybe, like, he knows about it now because maybe that dude that gave him the underwater shit probably told him about the weakness. Okay, but making him immortal and making, our making your little character lose is pretty good because it kind of just means he's still out there. Which is good, but the underwater shit. Did he really need the whole cavalcade of underwater weapons? I'm saying that's three. I'm saying that three times fast. Underwater weapons. The whole cavalcade of underwater weapons. The whole cavalcade of underwater weapons. The whole cavalcade of underwater weapons. See, I did it. I want to see you guys do it. Like, seriously, tell me in the comments, do you, did any of you actually do this? But... Literally, I'm sick of I mean, I, I like it though, but you you lost me at the underwater water at the underwater weapons. You lost me during that part. But I know it's a pretty good story. You just need to, you know, like dial back the underwater shit. Like me, the hagfish is dragging him underwater, and he knows it's only like a matter of time before he dies. So he like pulls out like a switchblade he had on him, and he like tries to just jug the fish, not even to try to save his life, but try to take the fish with him if he's gonna die. You know, it make more sense that way. 
Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you do make a point, but I do like the other one with weapons. See, and that's the thing, though. Me and you fuck, me and you fuck with the laws of physics on a daily basis. But if you're doing a regular story about a human, you wouldn't have underwater weapons. Or at least explain how he got that. This guy said, oh yeah, scientists held them out. Well, I hope you like this box this boxtober video. We'll see you guys later and remember. Even though there ain't no Halloween this year, you can still eat all your goddamn candy. Peace. See you guys later. And beware of the hagfish.